We continue our courageous conversations this morning with a look at political polarization in America. One big issue in politics is climate change. 97% of weather and climate experts say humans are the primary cause of global warming. But if so, why is the debate on the issue so heated? I talked to one local brewery dealing with the impact of climate change every day and says the solution could be a hard brew. It's football season. Whether you're tailgating or you're watching the games from home, if you're kicking back enjoying a beer, have you ever thought about how weather and climate impact the taste or even the cost of that bottle? We love making beer in this community. Mother's Brewing Company has served Springfield since 2011. It imports key raw ingredients, barley, hops, yeast, from as far as the Pacific Northwest. It looks to local farmers in Missouri and Oklahoma for seasonal fruits like peaches and cucumbers. Year to year variation uh, in the growing regions for those crops can have a dramatic impact on the yields and the quality of the product that we get. David Soper is the lead brewer. He says communication with local farmers is key to how they handle seasonal variation. But most of the time, Mother Nature decides for them. We actually had a really late frost and it, uh, it killed a lot of fruit on the tree. But fruit is not the most important ingredient. Beer is 99% water. We're basically just a big water treatment plant. Warming temperatures in McDaniel Lake have caused an algae bloom. Not a harmful one, but one that affects the flavor of the water, altering the taste of your beer. The list and frequency of weather-related impacts like these are only growing with climate change. Here in Missouri, not only do we become more susceptible to warming temperatures, but also more frequent heavy downpours and elongated growing seasons. Some challenges already met by Mother's Brewery. Dr. David Perkins from Missouri State has surveyed how people perceive and understand climate change. He compares it to a baseball player on steroids. Did the baseball player hit the home run because he was taking steroids? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, but did that baseball player have an increased capacity to hit a home run? Is the likelihood of hitting that home run because you're on steroids higher? The answer is probably yes. And, you know, as it relates to the climate, our superstorms, our hurricanes and droughts, are they directly attributable to climate change? You know, it's kind of the same thing as the baseball analogy. With warming temperatures, the atmosphere has the capacity to drop heavier downpours. Those temperatures also bring warming oceans and the ability to get more of that water to evaporate into the atmosphere. Dr. Art Digitano is a climatologist and professor at Cornell University. If we think of the atmosphere as being a bucket, um, the bucket gets bigger and eventually the weather systems and the things like that uh, cause the bucket to empty. Getting a lot of rain at once doesn't necessarily add to our yearly total. 30 inches over 100 days is manageable. Over 10 days equals flash flooding and it's that extreme rain that can hurt agriculture and in turn affect your beer. But this series is about political polarization. If we're seeing all these line graphs head up, carbon dioxide, temperatures, frequency of heavy downpours, even frequency of storms, then why is climate change often the target of a political discourse? Oftentimes we associate Democrats with being more supportive of climate change policies and Republicans of being more dismissive or doubtful. Fewer than one in 10 people are actually dismissive of climate change. As it turns out, you know, um, a lot more are concerned or interested. The problem that we have is that, you know, our loudest voices are on either end. So we need to disentangle, you know, the blame, the politics, the who's going to get, you know, the finger pointed at them. Currently, the United States is the only country not participating in the Paris Climate Accord, an international pledge for nations to step up and decrease carbon emissions. Is this something where government needs to step in and offer more regulation? Should we let individuals make decisions on their own carbon footprint? What do we do with all the millions of cars on the roads using fossil fuels? Are we ready to rebuild coastal homes so they are less vulnerable to sea level? It's a trade-off in saying, um, you know, kind of what, what people's values are. Do they value the environment? Do they uh, value uh, maybe taking some cutbacks now or making some changes now that that's really going to protect the, the whole system? Remember David at Mother's Brewery? He's had to make decisions on how to adapt already. Trying to get people to understand that climate change is actually happening and it's uh, it's affecting 
it's affecting what we're trying to do, what anybody that deals with raw commodities is dealing with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and we're seeing it. And seeing is believing. Scientists say there are three easy ways that you can be more green and decrease your carbon footprint. One, use cleaner ethanol gas at the pump. Two, you can buy and eat less meat. And three, you can reuse and recycle more. Keep it here. We'll be right back with Daybreak in 10 next.